All right, what's up everyone? So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the short little script that I use to create a blog on my website. I've talked about this before when I wrote it around a year or so ago, but it's way better than it was back then. And I've been getting, getting a lot of questions about it recently. So just before I even go into it, you can get it on my GitHub. It's just LukeSmithXYZ slash LB. There's only one file you need, it's this LB. Uh, what does LB stand for? I don't know. Luke's blog, maybe less bloat. It doesn't really stand for anything in particular. But you can download that script, and if you look at it, if you look at it, it is, um, I mean, as the GitHub said, it says it's a blog and RSS system in less than 100 lines of shell script. Um, I think it's actually, yeah, it's less than 80 now, so I guess maybe that makes it better. Um, but I've added a bunch of stuff to this while simultaneously making it uh, you know, less lines of codes. It, code. Anyway, I'll talk about what this thing actually does because that's what matters. So here's my website. Um, now this script generates a blog, but a blog that's viewable in many different ways depending on what you want. So for example, you can have a blog index file that looks like this. This is generated automatically. So you have all your blog posts, you have, um, you know, the date they were released, that's automatically added. Um, in addition to that, you have a rolling blog page. This originally was the only interface of the blog, uh, but you know it's easy enough to add everything at once. So you, it also generates a page that looks like this. Notice that uh, you know each of these blog posts is an individual entry. Now there are links on both the blog index and this to a standalone page for each blog entry, so you can click on that. Um, and all this again is automatically generated. And also on the rolling blog page, you have uh, you know links, so you can either click on this link or uh, copy it to someone someone else. And the idea behind this is, of course, it links directly to that post in the rolling blog page. And that's nice if you want to link someone to something on your blog, but you'd also sort of like them to scroll up and down and see what else is on there. Um, but of course, there's more stuff. Uh, in addition, I don't have this link directly from my website, but if you have an Apache web server, it also, uh, you know, all of the blog posts are, you know, stored in the blog directory, and you can see them in Apache's, uh, you know, index directory thing. Uh, this, uh, the blog script will automatically generate a, um, basically a, an HT access file that has descriptions of all this. And there's actually, the, I, I don't really think of this as being a main use of the blog, but there's another reason I do this that I'll, I'll talk about in a second. Um, and of course, I should say that all of this stuff has, you know, all like the the standalone blog pages and also the rolling blog. If I go back to the rolling blog for a second, um, you'll notice that, you know, these entries all have custom CSS. You can easily set your own CSS for all of these. So if you want them to stick out, you know, mine puts them in sort of bubbles with, you know, lines on the left, but you can do whatever you want. Now, in addition to all this, something that I think is sort of most important is having an RSS entry for everything. So in addition to it, the script automatically generating a blog, it generates an RSS entry for every single thing. And one thing that really peeves me about some uh, RSS feeds based on blogs is uh, they don't include the entire post, but uh, in this case, it does. The blog, the entire blog post, all the text is included in the RSS entry. So if you want, you don't have to go to my website to read my blog. You can just uh, have the RSS feed and then read whatever. Uh, so that's pretty nice. And of course, all, you know, it validates, right? Everything works uh, pretty much well. Um, so let me show you. So how do I do this? How does this actually work? Um, it's pretty simple. Um, it's sort of like a static site generator, but it's probably even, uh, you don't even have templates or anything. What this script does is literally just adds HTML to particular files. So while generating the standalone pages. Um, let me show you, the, show you the interface of it. So if I go to my website folder uh, and I'm going to run... I'm gonna run the LB script. Uh, it'll give you directions, but I'll go ahead and run you through it. So if I wanna make a new blog post, I can press LB, uh, just run the script with the in option, and let's name our, we'll just say, this is an example blog post. Okay, so then it just, what it then does is stores this in a drafts directory, and uh, you know, you can write anything, you can write, um, 
any HTML um, in this post. Okay, so when you're done, you can exit. It doesn't automatically add this post to your blog. You have to publish it, that is run it with the P option, uh, and it'll ask you to add, you know, it, this is listing out all the drafts that I have in my folder. And if I wanna add one, I can just select the number that is listed here um, and press enter. So now if I, uh, let me actually open up um, uh, that file, the blog index file, and you'll see that this post now exists. Um, I haven't uploaded it to my website, but uh, you know, you can go on here, you can, okay, it has its own standalone page, it has all the different links required. Um, now, you can also add anything, you can add an HTML, it's pretty straightforward. Um, now, of course, you can also, let's say, I mean, obviously, I don't really want this post, so I can delete it with LBD, um, and uh, I can get rid of that by typing in its number, very simple. I can also, one thing that I've added since I originally uh, started the blog script is an ability to revise previous blog posts. So you can type in R and it will give you already published blog posts and it'll basically copy them back to the drafts directory and you can edit them and then republish them if you made some kind of mistake or a link changed or something else. That's a relatively recent addition. Um, now, there are a couple other things. Now, really how this thing works, aside from the post that is just automatically generated, um, you know, when, whenever, you, um, uh, you, whenever you, like, start writing it out, everything else, is, all the other relevant metadata, so to speak, is actually just stored in the htaccess file. Now, as I said a second ago, you can, um, if you don't know, Apache web servers have this ability to look at directories, um, and you can list out all the files in a directory with a description. Um, now, coincidentally enough, I sort of use the htaccess file uh, as a kind of a database. So if you go into this file, you'll see that what I do is I really just add the name of the blog post and its blog post, its HTML file, and then in a comment, I include the date it was originally published. Um, and that's just a way of having a database file, so it makes it easier to, I guess, revise posts. Originally, when I first put the blog script out, I had I actually put that information in the file, which is really ugly, and the user can mess it up. But now it's better. So, um, and of course, when you delete a post, it um, uses. You can check it out yourself. It will go through. Um, it will go through all your RSS file, your blog file, your index file, search for the relevant, using a sed command, it'll search for the relevant entry and delete that. So every all of that stuff is automatic. Now, I should say there's a, you have to do a little installation to get this working, although it's super easy. I mean, it's, it shouldn't even be called installation. Actually, if you run the blog script, it'll tell you what to do. Um, and that is, be sure to have the following pattern added to your RSS feed, blog file, and blog index. And that is this little comment. And so what this little comment does, if I open up my blog index file, um, you'll see that uh, this little line here, this, this comment marks where the blog script is going to be adding new material. So if I add a new uh, you know, blog, blog post, the in the index file, it's gonna add the list item of the new blog post right below this uh, this uh, line right here. Same thing in my RSS feed. If I go to my RSS feed, um, you have to, all you have to do is put in this little line here and it will automatically add the new RSS entries directly below that. So to install it, all you really have to do is add uh, to the blog file, whatever file you want to have the index, whatever file you want to, you know, use as your RSS, and whatever file you want to use as your rolling blog page, add to them these little comments. And that is where the script will add everything. And that's it. That's really all you have to do. Um, but there is a couple extra things, a, and a couple extra little notes people have asked me about in the, uh, in the past, and I want to explain why I do them. Uh, and also little perks. So, uh, first off, one thing I get asked a lot about is on my main page, I have this recent blog posts uh, area. This is not actually automatically generated by the script. It's not a built-in feature, but it's something that it's literally like two lines of code. It's super easy to do yourself. Um, now, what this is, uh, I will go to, I have a little update script that I can pull up here. Um, so this is the script that I run. It's really an rsync command that 
you know, uh, puts my remote or my local repository or my local website, it uploads that to my remote website. That's all that does. Um, so uh, I run this whenever I want to update my website. But before that command, I have these two little lines here run. And what that does, I'll show you what that does. But really, uh, let's see. Yeah, so I grep out the sequence of list item from the blog index file, and that will list out all of the uh, all the blog entries. And specifically, I want the most recent five, so I'm going to say said five Q, uh, which is pretty autistic, but you know. Um, and then I'm going to put them all on one line using uh, translate. Okay, so all of these are now on one line, et cetera, et cetera. And basically what I do is I take that sequence, which is going to be the last five blog entries, and I search for the uh, a comment blog that I put on my main page. And this command just replaces that line that has blog on it with a new line that says blog and then the five entries. So all five of those entries, if I show you the source for this, are right here. Again, it just says blog, and then it lists all the five entries all in one. Okay, so really every, so what this script is doing, or what these two lines are doing, is that uh, every single time I update my website, these two lines run, which will find the last five blog entries and will put them on my main page so people can see what I put up most recently. So that's, that's one thing. Another thing that I do, when I first made the script, I was a little worried about um, like the rolling blog page becoming too big. Especially if you're, I, I don't use images in my posts, but you know, sometimes I have really long blog, blog entries or something. So one thing that I did actually is I divide, um, I actually use as my rolling blog page a file named 2019, or in 2018 I used 2018. And the idea behind that is every year I will switch my blog, you know, my blog post just so it doesn't get too big. And what I can do is I actually link blog HTML to whatever year it is now. So um, now blog HTML is not set in the blog file in LB. LB is going to add stuff to 2019. But if everyone, anyone goes to lukesmith.xyz slash blog.html, it will automatically link to whatever year it is. And that's just to make things a little easier for the user, but also keep permalinks correct so I'm not actually moving things around. So that's why I do that. If you're not putting up that many blog posts, you might not have to worry about it, but I wanted to be extra cautious when I started. Um, and let's see, one other thing that I don't have done automatically, mainly because I don't necessarily want it to be a set feature, is on the blog index file, um, you'll notice that there are month uh, title or head headings here. These are not added automatically. I, every month I will manually add it and I'll manually move the comment uh, after which you put um, new blog entries. And that's just because, you know, I don't, it's, it'd be a little more difficult to have the script do that automatically. And there might be a lot of people who just want the list entries and, you know, nothing else. Don't, don't want any of these fancy headers. So I don't want to enforce that every, on everyone. Um, so anyway, uh, so that's about it. I encourage you, again, check it out. I'll put the link to it in the description. It's just on GitHub, LukeSmithXYZ slash LB. Um, if you have any suggest oh there are other things other little changes i've added in like better um you know urls and stuff like that it used to be really messy but um i, I encourage you to check it out just play around with it um i know i get emails from people all the time who say wow this thing's great i found it and i really enjoy it so i just wanted to do this video making sure that everyone else knows about it so uh, anyway thank you and i will see you guys in the next video